New at 11 tractor trailers may soon be banned from a few Roanoke County roads. Leaders are looking at restricting them on some roads near Northside High School after complaints from neighbors. 10 News reporter Shane Dwyer is live at the Roanoke County Administration Building with a look at the plan. So Shane, are the trucks a problem right now? Lindsay and John, not yet. The trucks right now, not the problem, but it's the planned industrial building venture out there off Woodhaven Road that is a joint venture by multiple uh, local governments here in the area that has people on Woodhaven Road a little concerned about what's to come. So folks here and planners here at the Roanoke County Administration Building have been working with those neighbors out on Woodhaven Road to try to at least solve this truck problem before it arrives. Tucked at the foot of the mountains, people move here to Woodhaven Road for the rural Roanoke County feel. But this area, well, it's changing. One of the major things that we're worried about is the extra traffic, and especially the truck traffic, which is going to cause a, a lot of problems for the, especially the people that live along Woodhaven Road. Uh, the, Woodhaven side. the Western Virginia Regional Industrial Facility Authority announced two years ago a building's going up for a high-tech company here in the 81-581 junction. Neighbors fought and then begrudgingly accepted, but continued hammering home their primary fear. It's a um, response to the citizen concerns and uh, a legitimate response, I think. Uh, not perfect, uh, we, but we have seen result, good results with the, with the through truck restrictions. The county is considering routing all tractor trailers through Valley Point as a way to meet in the middle. The proposal would lead truckers off 581 onto Peters Creek Road, then onto Valley Point Parkway, and then onto Woodhaven, limiting residential exposure. It's worked for the county before, and they're hoping it works again. It does cut down the truck traffic. It doesn't completely eliminate it. We still have some problems, but uh, it's enforced by local police, and uh, we do get good results. Neighbors say anything is better than nothing and are pleased with the offer. But they still wish leaders would take the project to what they say are better properties elsewhere. What we would really like to see is for that, uh, if they can fill those areas up, then, then we start looking to uh, go into uh, step two into other areas. County leaders say that actually having this truck problem figured out before a tenant ever arrives is actually a selling point for a tenant. That way they know how they can get their people and their goods in and out of the property. A public hearing for this plan is slated Tuesday at 3 here at the County Administration Building in Roanoke County. It will then need full approval by the Board of Supervisors and then of course we'll go to the Virginia Department of Transportation for their approval as well. Live in Roanoke County, Shane Dwyer, 10 News, working for you. New at 11 tonight, cleanup continues in Danville with a local state of emergency still in place. The city says there are fewer than 200 customers without power right now. That's a good thing. Blue Park is now open, but Market Garden Field will stay closed for the winter. The Riverwalk trails are uh, still closed and full debris cleanup is expected to take a few months. And tonight, fire departments across the Commonwealth continue to mourn the loss of Hanover County firefighter Lieutenant Brad Clark. Earlier today, thousands came out to pay respects as he was laid to rest nearly a week after he was tragically killed during Tropical Storm Michael. Firefighters from dozens of departments came out, including Roanoke County. Reporter Karina Bolster takes us inside the tearful ceremony. Lieutenant Clark has responded to his last alarm and is off of the air. The tune of America the Beautiful rang out as hundreds of firefighters from across the area and nation filled the building to honor Lieutenant Clark. He was a man who loved what he did, who insisted you be as good as he was, and he wasn't one to brag how good he was. He showed it in his actions. The 43-year-old grew up in the fire department, his father a longtime firefighter with Henrico County. He was short in stature but his heart was big as a moon. His dedication to his family, Gethsemane Church, Hanover Fire Department, and all of his friends had no limits. Now, it wasn't just Hanover County Fire and EMS who came out here today. There were also firefighters from across the nation who came here to pay their respects. You know, firefighters all across the country, whenever we lose one, it hurts all of us. Brad is my hero. His actions Thursday night saved the lives of Chris Ellish, Carter Lewis, and David Johnson. Family and friends recalled his big personality. Brad had the most contagious laugh and the warmest spirit. 
that could reach the depths of our souls. I knew that he would be a force to be reckoned with. Boy, was he ever. And while Clark died doing the job he loved, he was also prepared for this situation, leaving behind a letter which was read aloud by his brother. Love to see other people smile, so I suppose you know I spent a great deal of my life trying to make you all show your teeth. Clark also directed that letter towards his four daughters. All of you have amazing hearts, so full of love. Don't be selfish with them. And his wife. I've loved you since I was 19 years old. No matter the distance or time between us, my love for you was always there. And as the bell rang one last time, <laughs> the memory of Lieutenant Brad Clark will never be forgotten. Love you, Brad. In Caroline County, Karina Bolster, NBC 12 News. Neighbors living in one of the lowest lying areas of Roanoke County are frustrated over flooding. South Park Circle Drive neighbors say Tropical Storm Michael was the second blow to their homes. They believe a nearby housing development is partly to blame because there's only one main storm drain, drain on that street. Roanoke County tells 10 News they're currently looking at FEMA programs to help the area. New tonight, today marks nine years since Virginia Tech student Morgan Harrington vanished from outside a Metallica concert in Charlottesville. As we reported, police later found her body and arrested the man who murdered her. Nearly a decade later, her parents hoped to use that tragedy to help other students. There's now a plaque at the site where Morgan was last seen alive. This bridge uh, serves a more critical, important purpose for the community at large. This bridge is a constant reminder to young people here in Charlottesville about the existence of